Good evening, everybody. This is the Camera Artist Guild Thursday Image Critique, and I am your host, George Deloach. I'm a portrait artist and photographer's coach coming to you from Los Angeles, California, and I hope you have had a fabulous week. I'm glad to be back and meeting up with you again uh, on this Thursday. We've got some great images, and we're going to get into those in just a little bit. Uh, I hope your week's going good. I know things are picking up over here on this end of the on the left side of the United States on the left coast. Uh, business is starting to pick up. I've got a lot of jobs in the uh, on the calendar and some in the can. And so I am really thrilled that uh, things are finally starting to take off. Now, I had another one of those crazy occurrences. So you know, I'm really kind of lucky to be here. Uh, the, the crazy part about it was you know, I've, I've had a couple of health crises, and uh, that happens when you get older. It's just all part of everything. But I uh, was talking to my cardiologist, and it's a younger lady, and she says, well, you know, uh, you've got a clogged artery in your heart, but we can open that up. We can help you. Uh, and there's a 94% chance of it being just fine. And you won't have to take any meds, and everything will be all right. And I said, wow, that sounds pretty good. So I decided to go ahead and go along with it. Well, wouldn't you know, they got me into the operating room on Monday and uh, all of a sudden I ended up with a cardiac arrest. Uh, I was laying there kind of meditating because uh, they were doing the operation basically with no anesthesia because, uh, you know, it really doesn't doesn't bother you that much. It's just, you know, the incision and everything. But then they're, they're prodding around and prodding around. And all of a sudden, I felt somebody start bumping me in the chest, just punching me in the chest, punching, and punching, punching. And I go, what? And then I just gray out completely. And uh, they brought me back, but uh, my heart got really upset at, at all that prodding around and <laughs> rewarded me with a timeout. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I am tough and uh, life is good and God is good. And I am here and doing well. And so we are, uh, we made it back in time for the broadcast. And here we are on another fine Thursday going at it again. Uh, I did want to talk to you about a couple of things. I always try to bring a little bit of something, you know, be there uh, for the business or for the photography. And um, I want to talk to you about developing a style. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of us like to have our unique style and some styles develop. But, you know, I find out that uh, a style is something that develops over time out of practice rather than something that you can force. Uh, one of the first things that you have to do is become truly familiar and educated with fine photography. Now, in, the recent, in our recent years, we've done away with most of the, the uh, fine photography magazines and sources. When I was a kid growing up, there was Life Magazine, there was Look Magazine, Time. Uh, there was National Geographic, and there was no internet. Uh, there was only black and white TV. And I'm really dating myself. But those magazines were just the thing, the thing and the ticket for photography. And we got a chance to observe some of the greatest photographers of all time were tied up into, uh, tied up in, into photographing those images. And we got to be visually literate. We could look at a photograph and know whether it was good or not. And now over the period of time, especially, you know, here today, there's so many people that are taking snapshots on their phones and there's Instagram and there's TikTok and there's Snapchat and there's all of these other different forms where people take pictures of their food, take snapshots of themselves, and they're not well composed. They're not well lit. They're not well uh, exposed. And yet people have become accustomed to that kind of art. So in order to set yourself apart from the ordinary type of photographer, you're going to have to, first of all, feed yourself with nothing but the best art. You're going to have to feed yourself with photography from the great masters, from painting from the great masters. Uh, you are, uh, I have my own personal heroes. Uh, Joseph Karsh is one, Arnold Newman is another one. Uh, there's a photographer by the name of Horsh P. Horsh that was another great photographer, and they made images that were phenomenal. George Harrell, uh, and, or uh, I think I said Arnold Newman. Uh, 
uh, their images live on today, you know, in, in history as some of the greatest images ever produced. Now, we have modern day people like uh, Selinger and uh, Annie Leibovitz does a phenomenal job. Uh, Joe McNally. They uh, all create great images. Find images that really turn you on. Stuff that you would love to do. And then go through a process called deconstruction. And you should be deconstructing images all the time. It'll become it'll come almost automatic. You'll look at it and you'll say, now, how do they do that? And after you become good at deconstruction, you'll be able to look at the light and see the pattern of the light. You'll be able to see how they compose the image, where they place their subjects in the image, where they how they handle the background, how they handle the image, how they handle the foreground, if there was any foreground and how the entire image is assembled. And as you become good at uh, deconstruction, then the next process is visualization. And that is when you decide that you're going to create an image, you need to visualize that image in your mind's eye until that image is already complete. I like to say that the image is taken long before you pick up the camera. You have already created the image in your mind. Now the only uh, 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 challenge is to take the medium of photography and manipulate all of the different things that we have in our image in order to create the image that you envisioned in your mind. And now the frustration comes when your ability at the mastery of photography really kind of stands as an impediment to creating the image that you visualize. But then that's where the work comes in. And you need to practice and practice. And you'll fall short. Uh, let's, let's put it like this. I have fallen short time and time again. I've spent hours in the studio and I have set up the remote control. And I put myself in the position because nobody's going to sit there as long as, as you'd like. I put myself in the position of the subject. And I've played with lighting. I've played with the positioning. And I photograph myself and then I go look at it. And I photograph myself and I go look at it. And slowly you begin to craft the image so that everything is in the right position. Then you bring in the talent and you plug the talent into it and you create the image. And after you've done that enough times, you will find things that are really attracted, that you are really attracted to. And uh, lighting patterns and uh, lens choices, there are things that, that you just, you will like. And out of that evolves a style. Now, I can see a lot of your styles uh, developing. And uh, matter of fact, we, we uh, have a lot of them today. And I'll, I'll point out some of the stuff. And I can look at those images usually and tell who created them. So uh, hope that helped out a little bit. Uh, it is a challenge to be at it, but you keep working at it and you get good. Uh, let me see here. We're going to. Open up the chat and uh, hey, hey, we got everybody coming in here. Uh, I, uh, okay, great. This new chat thing doesn't show any any names who it's from, but what's going on, y'all? Glad to see you, and I'm glad. Am I glad to be here after that occurrence here on Monday? Wow. <laughs> okay, you guys, let's uh, get on over to the images. And we will take a look at uh, the images here. And uh, let's just see what we're doing. We're going to turn around and get uh, ready to go. Okay, the first image is by uh, John, John E. Bauer. And John, you, you always, uh, you now, You've got a distinctive style that's evolving where you like putting the light, the sunlight at low camera, low angle. So it's afternoon, late afternoon, approaching golden hour. But you like to put that light behind the subject and then shoot into that light. And it's an interesting style. Uh, there are several people that have uh, worked at it. One of the people that uh, that's done a little bit of it is Joel Grimes. Uh, there are a couple others out there. Uh, this is a this is the beginnings of a really cool image. Now, there's a couple of things you have to remember. Uh, when you let the light source, the sun, come through the subject here, where it's coming through the hand, 
Now, that may be intentional because that's the way you look at it. But what that will do now, if you want to do this and if it's something that you've chosen to do, then good enough. It's, it's not up to me to say, you know, what's good or bad. But I just want to point out something. When that light comes through there, it flares the lens. It goes into the lens. It travels across the surface of the lens and it degrades the image as far as contrast and saturation in and around the area near the lens. And because it's a bright light and very bright and is flaring into the, the hand and the body and upper torso, your, your eye gets drawn there where I would believe that you would want your, the eye of the viewer to be right up here at the subject. Now, the subject is, you know, it's, it's pretty neat. I think that you could move that camera position just a little bit uh, over and let that light, and keep the same lighting pattern behind, but let that light not come through the, the, uh, the arm right here, but actually be blocked off by the arm. Hold, hold the, uh, the left arm out so you would get a shape in the upper torso of the body but you wouldn't get that flare coming through the lens because the body itself would be, would be blocking the direct light. And then you're using your artificial light. Uh, maybe your composition would be a little stronger if you took the uh, image from right bullseye dead center and moved it a little bit off to the third, brought a little more basketball net in there. Uh, I think that would, that would strengthen it. Uh, and I would, Put and I understand you're trying to show height, uh, and you know that's a that's that that you know that's admirable. One of the best ways to do that from this position, if you're going to take a low position like that, is a shift <laughs> shift tilt lens. Uh, uh, I have one that's a Nikon lens. It happens to be an older one uh, and it's manual, but the lens elements front elements actually shift and what that does is that changes the perspective you have the same height but you bring the feet and uh, the head back together so that the feet don't look uh, so huge and the head looks so small uh, yet you still have the same height uh, relationship uh, so that's that's you now that's maybe a radical decision but uh, it's a lens that you'll use periodically you could do that uh, in Photoshop, you can do some stuff with transform with the transform tool to bring that together, or you can raise that camera angle till it's about waist high and try at that or move farther off the subject to the back and use a longer lens. Now, I don't know what, uh, what length lens you were using at the time, but, uh, maybe you back off and use a 200. And then you could keep the same height, uh, but the distortion wouldn't be quite as radical. Uh, but uh, it's still a great image. I really like it. Uh, I, and I like your style. I can still remember the lady on the, the bench alongside the ocean with the sun uh, behind her hat and everything, which made for a very nice looking image. So uh, just keep it up, man. Keep it up. You you definitely have a style developing. I can tell your image the minute it comes up. Okay, Keith Davis. Now Keith, uh, you Keith runs a lot of different things. Does a lot of different things, and so his style is all over. But this is unusual for you to move into this area. Uh, I actually think this one this one really calls for uh, at least a reflector if not a secondary light source and available light source, like uh, I would use a large uh, shoot-through umbrella if I could get away with it, uh, like a Paul Buff or, uh, or a um, uh, soft cider, soft lighter, uh, something like that. And uh, I wouldn't put enough light through it that you could really tell but I'd raise her exposure up a little bit more. Now, two things would happen when you do that. You could darken the background down a little bit by dragging the shutter, that is uh, increasing the shutter speed, uh, and then adding the light on the front end, which would still keep this beautiful rim light that you're getting from the sun. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, there's a couple of things you can do. Just kind of balance that light out there a little bit more. Um, okay. Uh, and again, Keith, Keith, boy, you have really developed as a photographer. I, I want to just say that, uh, you know, man, I remember when you started out, uh, and, uh, I remember that, uh, you know, the images that you were sending, they were all pent up and I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't show half of them because they were so provocative. And now you're starting to move over to other stuff. Now, you know, I'm comfortable with provocative images as long as it's not too, not too many X's in it. But Facebook won't allow me to, to uh, transmit images that are provocative. But uh, anyway, uh, you're one of, the, one of the good brothers, man. And I, 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 I just really uh, thank you great, man. That's uh, Philadelphia. That's Keith Davis. Okay. Al Cabrera. Al, you are outstanding. And again, your style has really come up. Uh, I love the way you are doing everything. Uh, it, uh, you, I, I understand the wide angle. Uh, I don't know whether I would use that wide angle of lens if I could get back a little bit farther. Uh, you've got some key holding happening here uh, with the church. And uh, well, not key holding, but perspective. The church leans into the center of the image rather than being straight up, um, straightened up. So you could probably get away with doing some uh, retouching to it. Uh, your lighting and your position on the model is very nice. Uh, all in all, it's a great image. <laughs> but you always do good stuff, man. You always do. And sometimes I struggle to try to figure things out that I can help you move up to the next level. Uh, but uh, one thing that also might help, just think about it, uh, using a grid on your light source, which would focus the light up here on the model, but it would taper off some into the hand region. Uh, so this hand wouldn't be so bright in a predominant portion of the image. It would just, uh, and the dress itself, would not have uh, all of the light on it. So it, it just means using a grid and uh, positioning it a little bit. But wow, I, I even like the exposure and as a gift to get that street light on and it be the, the proper brightness to fit in with the overall scene and not be uh, out of exposure. But everything from the backlighting in the sun, uh, the street light, the uh, the model, yeah, good stuff, Al. Keep keep showing it. Okay, now Willie, you done you done done it this time, man. You got another great image. Uh, I like the fact that you guys are challenging the sunlight. Now you didn't, you were able to get the sun low enough and behind some of the tree that it didn't flare your model. You dropped your model in on the one third compositional line and you decided to go available light, uh, if you could, in post-production, I might tone this down a little bit so that the model ends up being the brightest portion of the image. But uh, your composition is strong. Your pose is strong. Your model, you know, another beautiful model. Uh, all in all, great image. Uh, just keep it up. It's making me, it's more difficult to pick out images. Uh, this is Scott from Nigeria, and this is a recreation, but it, it's a very powerful image. Uh, I like the fact that it's in black and white, uh, even though it, this is a recreation. Uh, maybe I wouldn't crop the head off quite so tight on the top. I'd leave a little more room there on the upper end of the image, but uh, you dropped him in on the one third compositional line, maybe just a little bit more to the left. Uh, and, but uh, all in all, it's, uh, it's a very powerful image. And so uh, I like it a lot and congratulations on it. Uh, just keep coming. Uh, all of you guys uh, from uh, the, uh, both from India and from Africa, your, your images are coming along really good and I'm glad to see you.
Uh, I hope you keep sending images in. And, uh, well, that's it. That's the five for this week. Let me swing around over here. And uh, mm, there we go. <laughs> Let's get the, get the camera back up there again. Okay. I have promised you that I'm going to try to keep this short. I mean, you know, I, I could go on for a half hour or an hour. And we used to go on from an hour, but it, it makes it difficult to look at a whole broadcast. And let's just try to keep them short and keep moving. Uh, do me a favor. Uh, tell other people about this broadcast. Send your friends over here. Let other, other photographers know and other forums that we are here and are growing. And this is a place where they can find information to feed and grow their photography business, both uh, themselves as an artist and as a businessman. Uh, a welcome again to people from all over the, the world, uh, from uh, India and Japan and the Philippines. Uh, we even got a hit from China. I don't even know how I got China. All over Europe, South America, then all over Africa, both West Africa, East Africa, and South Africa. Uh, Zambia, Rwanda, uh, Kenya, Uganda, um, Ghana over in West Africa, Nigeria over in West Africa, uh, Liberia. We've gotten a lot of, lot of hits from Liberia. And so I am glad to see you guys and hope you keep coming. And then all over the United States, uh, all over uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, uh, all of you guys are coming in strong. I just Really excited about it. Philadelphia, the Philly Dogs. They got the boys up there in Philly. Good enough for Philly. And uh, Chicago, uh, Detroit City. I just love it. And San Francisco. So we're spread out all over everywhere. And uh, that's the way it's supposed to be. We're tied together. Even though we might not speak uh, the exact same language, although it's mostly English-speaking countries that we're going out to, uh, we are tied together by our love of photography. It is a phenomenal art form. I have been with it all my life. I love it with a passion. Uh, I still love it now. Uh, that then uh, just as much now as it is a younger guy. And I know you do too. So stay tuned. Tune in next week. We'll have a few more tips for you and some more critiques. And we'll just try to keep moving along. I know uh, the question we asked this week is, what are your favorite portrait lens? And it was a real toss-up. Uh, the 85 got a, got a big following. Uh, the 70 to 200 was not far behind. And then there were some 50s and some 50 millimeter votes in there and a couple other ones back and forth. Uh, I was really surprised that there wasn't any 135s. Now, there is, you know, your, your difference... And focal length is really not that, that big a difference from 85 to 135. Uh, you're a little closer, a little farther back. But the bokeh and the way the lenses work, uh, when uh, I first began with Nikon, and we were still Nikon film camera, the portrait lens was the 10525. That was it. Now, Canon, I think it was also 105 was the lens. But I'm not a, uh, a Canon guy, so I, uh, I'm not as well familiar with Canon. But uh, now my own self, uh, I use the 85. I use the 105 DC. But uh, when I'm on the road and if I have enough room, my favorite is the 135 DC. And uh, that's just for the heck of it. I love 5.6. Uh, Sometimes I'll go uh, for a shorter depth of field. I know uh, Scott Perry uh, uses a 50 with um, and shoots it close to wide open. And you've got a very shallow depth of field and some great bokeh, both the 85 millimeter lens from Nikon and 85 millimeter from Canon. Uh, both have great bokeh. Now, I don't know about the 85 from Sony. Uh, and... Uh, Sigma's really been doing some good stuff with their art glass. You know, it's uh, right up there. But uh, again, each lens has its own flavor. It's like a paintbrush. Every paintbrush is different. 
and you get it and you work with it and you put it through its paces and you test it and then you practice with it and you start getting things that just kind of look good to you and you're just satisfied with the way it looks at F4 or you're just satisfied with the way it looks at F8 or 28 or whatever. And you get the, the contrast that you like uh, and the, uh, the color uh, saturation. All of those things come in with the lens. And you pick the one that uh, lets you take your, there we go, take your visualized image and make it visible. Uh, so if you see a more muted tone, more pastels, then, you're, then the lens you choose would not be one that's very contrasty. It'd be ones that are more pastel. Uh, if you are uh, for bright, vibrant uh, color, then there are lenses that uh, will give you that kind of result as well, along with post-production processes and everything. But that's, uh, that's enough about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me get uh, my tracking ball around here and everything. Uh, it is great to have you. And great to be here. And I will see you all again next week. Uh, if I can get... I always have trouble getting the, getting the cursor around. <laughs> I, should work, I should work this cursor around ahead of time. I got a three-monitor rig here. And I have the, the broadcast on one monitor on, a, on an arm all the way out here in the middle of the floor. And I have my other two monitors behind me and I lose the cursor. It's somewhere along all of the different <laughs> monitors. <laughs> but anyway, good enough, everybody. Take care. We'll see you next week.